Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk all about how to push through when your game feels like absolute garbage, which is something lots of us amateurs deal with on a regular basis. So uh, grab a disc, find some space, and let's jump in. Drop! What's up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we are indeed going to be diving into the idea of what to do when you find yourself either at a plateau or an incredibly frustrating part of your game. Disc golf for most is a hobby that is designed to be as fun as possible. And when you find yourself unable to score like you want to, or when the disc just isn't coming out of your hand in a way that you can predict or in a way that you want it to, it can lead to an insane amount of frustration on the course. So if you find yourself in a difficult or frustrating season of your game right now. I want to go over a few quick tips that I think can help you overcome these trying times and get you out of that disc golf funk so that this infomercial doesn't apply to you. Oh, hello there. Do you know someone or would you personally identify as a Frisbee golfer? Although it once was designed to bring happiness and pleasure to its participants, the game of froth can often induce anger, frustration, and stress the longer a person finds himself playing this wonderful game. But we're here today to tell you that indeed, FOLF is not a game. It can lead to high levels of not dopamine as well as the termination of friendships. Take it from me, I've participated in disc golf for over a decade and have terminated no less than 43 friendships because these so-called friends kept using phrases like, you're still out or nice layup, dude. I'm pretty confident Air Bud could throw a disc farther than that. So if you're currently struggling in your game or find yourself frustrated, don't head to the backyard and put some more reps in on the practice basket thinking that one day you're actually gonna solve anything. Instead, be like me, pick up pickleball. That way you can not only not have friends, but you can tear your ACL in the process. Join me in saying, so long, frolfers. The first step that I'm gonna suggest to overcome difficult or trying times is a personal favorite here on the channel, and that is to play a few putter-only rounds. There are three incredible parts about putter-only rounds. The first is that throwing a putter, it is incredibly difficult to get yourself into a lot of trouble because putters by nature are not designed to go incredible distances, which means that they bring much more control to our game so that we can start hitting those fairways more accurately and with less effort. Accurate, accurately? Yeah, words are hard. The second thing putters can offer us is a little more feedback. If we throw a more neutral putter rather than something, let's say, that's super overstable, like a glorious pig or maybe like an overhyped zone, leaning on a more neutral putter like a sensei is going to give us that feedback of what we're doing right and wrong in our form so that way we know what might be causing those issues in our game when we aren't out there throwing putters and we're throwing our full back. And the third and probably my favorite part about throwing putter only rounds is the mental relief that you give yourself on the actual score of the round. Now, I'm a firm believer that you don't need to score every single round you play, but some people like popping that U-disc up and having stat after stat after stat, so this one's more for you guys. If you step up to a course that you traditionally play with your full bag and you decide to play a putter-only round, odds are you should not score as well because you do not have the drivers and things that you traditionally might lean on for the course. So if you get out there and you score extremely well throwing putters only, you can give yourself the reprieve of, wow, I just scored that well with just putters? Which is a pretty solid feeling. And it's gonna show you that some holes that you're throwing a bigger disc on, you may not actually need that faster speed disc to score well on that hole. But conversely, if the round doesn't go that well and you don't end up lighting the course up and shooting super hot, you can always tell yourself, well, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I was just playing with putters. I wasn't supposed to score well, so. Cool. It's super tough to define a putter only round as a losing situation, no matter how you slice it up. Personally, I love to play a putter only round leading up to every single tournament that I play. All it does is just boost my confidence to send me into that event with some high hopes. My second suggestion for overcoming a slump or a tough time in your game is to try out some new discs. If you've had the same discs in your bag for an extended period of time, one of two things could be happening to your game right now. The first is that you've reached a place of complacency and you're no longer testing what you can and can't do on a 
hole, and you slot it into a mindset of, you know, when I get out to old George Ward in Birmingham, Alabama, and there's no doo-doo on the tee pad. When I get to hole five, I like to grab that red destroyer and let her rip and throw her out there for about 15 years now. When we step up to holes that we've played a billion times, trying to throw the exact same shot of old that we succeeded with one other time on the box, most often all it leaves us with is frustration and disappointment that we weren't able to execute the shot we had in the past. Another drawback of having the same bag for years and years and expecting the same result is that because discs are made of plastic and they wear in over time, not cycling out those discs and putting new ones in there means that the disc that used to fly one way most likely isn't flying that way anymore. So because of that, it could lead to even more frustration on why the discs aren't behaving like they used to. For me, having new plastic in the bag can be a super exciting moment to sort of reinvigorate my game and bring a joy back to disc golf that wasn't there before. For instance, when I left Team Innova several months ago, I got kind of excited to kicking some discs out of my bag and trying to slot new ones in there that might have been suspect before or I never would have given a chance to. And it turns out discs and brands that I wasn't willing to try before became incredible flyers to me and are becoming staples of the bag right now. But I understand if you're balling on a budget, you may not have the opportunity to go out and just buy a bunch of new discs. So I would also suggest playing some bag swap rounds with friends and trying out some of their discs so that way you can all sort of have a bit more fun with the game and you may be able to find some new incredible flyers that will launch you past this terrible season that you find yourself in. The third thing that I would suggest to help you overcome a hard time or season in your disc golf game, especially when you're struggling, is to get out there and find a coach. Most often there are people in your local scene who are willing to offer in-person lessons and I would definitely suggest checking them out. However, it can always be a toss up on whether the person in your local scene is just really good at disc golf or if they're actually a good coach because they are not mutually exclusive. I know plenty of people who are incredibly good at disc golf who are terrible at teaching the game and I know plenty of people who are fantastic at teaching the game who are not shooting thousand rated round after thousand rated round. If you're having a hard time finding someone in your local community who can help you through that process, then I would suggest joining one of two Patreon communities and I am extremely biased for both of them. The first that I'm always going to suggest to people if you're looking for immediate coaching and it's worth every dollar spent is the Overthrow Disc Golf Patreon group. Josh and Mikey do an incredible job taking care of their patrons and ensuring that you are getting the coaching that you're paying for. I stand by that Josh is one of the best teachers that disc golf has ever seen and will always encourage people to go check them out. The second community that I'm going to recommend you check out, and once again, I'm extremely biased, is actually the Birdie Fam community. I don't hype it up in every single one of my videos, pushing people to it all the time, because the Birdie Fam is all about a community of disc golfers growing together. I do my best to address questions and things that come up. We have a very active Discord group, but at only $5 a month, it gets you access to a ton of people that are asking the same questions as you and probably in a similar point of your game. But quick warning, if you are watching this video and it is past the 15th of the month you are watching this in, public declaration, do not sign up for Discord until the start of the next month. I repeat, do not do it. Want to make sure that you're not getting overcharged or anything like that to be a part of that amazing community. You don't know what you don't know about your game and most often lots of people don't even record themselves to know what they're doing wrong in their game. Having a coach or guide to help you through that season or that plateau is absolutely monumental and I think even with our top touring pros, we're going to see more physical and mental coaches coming alongside those players to help them through the struggle and grind that is the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And like any good YouTube video, we say the best tip for last. If you are currently struggling or frustrated with your disc golf game, probably the best thing that you can do for your game overall and probably your mental health too is to take a break. Step away from disc golf, head home, put the bag in the closet, fold up the practice basket so that you're not tempted to get out there and grind through whatever it is that's messing up your putt right now. Hang out with some friends, some family, play some board games, or whatever you can do to occupy your time. And if you're looking for a way to spend that free time when you're not out on the disc golf course, you can always check out my new channel, Robbie C Gaming, where we're spending some time hanging out so I can connect with each and every one of you playing some video games like Marvel Snap and League of Legends. And we're eventually gonna be playing some board games on the channel as well. So definitely check it out. And subscribe it would mean a lot to me if you wanted to support over there too. Stepping away from the game will usually get rid of whatever bad habit has snuck into your form currently. And it also is going to give you a refreshing break from the frustration and mental grind that is the golf that we play. Like I've said before, this is a hobby for almost every single person that plays this game and pretty much all of you that are out here watching these videos. Unless you're my future best friend, Calvin Heinberg. And then once again, <laughs>
I'm just like, hit me up, dude. I'm always happy to hang out. I can't tell you the number of people that I have heard come back from a week-long vacation or even two or three weeks stepping away from their disc golf stuff and how much better they actually are at disc golf because they appreciate it once again. It hasn't become this grind over and over again, struggling through each and every round and waiting for it to go full Chinua a chubby and things fall apart during your next round. So hear me when I say that this random dude on the internet truly believes one of the best things you can do for your game during a hard season or a struggle that you might find yourself in literally right now is to take a break. So I want you to hear me when I say this and know that I mean this with everything in my heart. I am super sorry that you're in a frustrating season right now and I know it can feel super lonely, especially if some of your friends and people you regularly play with seem like they're playing out of their minds right now. We are literally all going to go through seasons of our game where things do not seem to be going right for us or we're just not playing up to the potential that we know we can play in. I hope that maybe one or two of these tips can be applied to your game and you can overcome this super stressful or frustrating season that you find yourself in. And if you have a tip that someone gave you during a hard or stressful time in your game that was actually super helpful that we didn't cover here, please feel free to let us know in the comments below what that is so that others may be able to latch onto that as well and move through this struggling time that they're in right now. I've had several conversations this week that are out of the norm talking to people about what I do for a living and when I get to tell them that I make YouTube content full time, I am blown away each and every time the words come out of my mouth, but I also know that it wouldn't be possible without each and every one of you. So thank you for your continued support and for making this dream a reality so that we can hopefully get out there and make the world a better place one disc and one one happy thought at a time, maybe that's too Peter Pan for us. All in all, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week, and I hope that you can make it great for someone else too. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.